Hey folks, it's Grimwit from Natchevo.com, and you are not imagining things. This is where you end up when you come out of your trance. Because the mine, or whatever? I like that building right over there. It's kind of Victorian. I really like it. Kind of reminds me of the Adams Family, only if it were bigger. Something? There's nothing to look at here. I guess let's check out the hideout. Must not hang around dangerous places. Seriously? Dangerous place powers activate! That was easy enough. What do we got left? Sharp objects? That's gonna be stabby stabby fun time. Get angry? Um, what? And do whatever you want. At long last, Lily had reached her destination. She had faced a thousand dangers. And finally, she now stood in Edna's hiding place. There was just one catch. Edna was gone. Okay, this is also something else to think about. I'll, I'll start talking about this when, uh, when we get towards the end of the game. Is that a whistle? Oh, we need that. That was a bad sign. Edna never went anywhere without her owl whistle. What? That was a bad... Edna... Okay, what else do we got? I got a telescope. Better look through that. Hmm. Alright. And a note. Oh my god. Edna had left a message. Hopefully she was alright. Lily! Help! I'm being devoured alive by a giant tentacled creature! Ah, wah. Dun 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 dun! <laughs> just kidding. I'm fine. I was just watching the bridge down by the river through my telescope. Dr. Marcel's minions seem to be planning something. I'll check it out up close. If I don't return, you have to get help. But don't worry, I'll be careful. Where are my kettle drum and my strobe flashlight? Dang. Well, see you soon. Toodaloo. Okay. Lily was relieved by the letter. But what if Dr. Marcel's men had caught her friend? Lily had to get to the bridge and look for Edna. She would find Garrett there, too. Hmm. Edna and Garrett. Interesting. Is that a beanbag candle chair? Fucking awesome. I want a beanbag kettle chair. Oh, kettle drum. For stealth action. That's what I was going to say. This place is fucking sweet. I figured they would have said more, but I guess not. <laughs> more. More lake. More. <laughs> I'm so lonely. Let's see here. That goes back to the convent. That goes to town. That goes to a whistle. That goes to the bridge. Let's do the bridge. This damn piece of junk. Can you believe it? We finally found the girl, and now the car won't start. What? Should I perhaps push? This car should have been inspected months ago. But ever since the accident, the doctor has let everything go downhill. It's a shame. So... It was true. The attendants had already found Edna. Why wasn't Garrett doing anything? Lily somehow had to get his attention. Alright, well. I mean, what are owl whistles for? We could try this cocktail album. But that didn't seem right. Or this ball of yarn. We know we're going to be using this. Oh. It was hopeless. Lily would never catch Garrett's attention while the owl kept interfering. Hmm. Well, let's use this on the owl. Hey, or stop that. Okay, he's in a stop that mode. You can tell because of his face. So, hey. You stop that. I'm sorry, too. Well, 
what? Stop it. Hey. Huh. I'm sorry. I am literally just kind of randomly clicking on here, hoping I hit the right combination. Oh, there's a happy one. Okay, no. Lily was able to finally give Garrett the signal without being interrupted. He was making eyes at me. Owl eyes. Lily was able to finally give Garrett the signal we without know. being interrupted. Garrett didn't seem to hear Lily's owl call at all. She tried once more, this time a little louder. Did you hear that too? Someone's out there. Just wait. We'll take care of it. Uh oh. Well, who do we have here? But that's. Uh oh. Hey, it's despicable. The, the Phantom. Phantom. So, um, this is a thing that happened. Lily thoughtfully watched the fleeing attendants for a long while. She was used to having bizarre phantoms appear behind her without warning. But the way Dr. Marcel's minions had reacted surprised her. Usually, adults just ignore these creatures. Uh, hey, is that a car ring? Car, car ring? Key car? Key ring? Man. <laughs> Verbal typos only here on Match Evil's channel. Maybe we can actually use the car. The attendants had forgotten their key. Lily thought it would be a good idea to hold on to it. Otherwise, someone might steal it. That would be awful. The attendants had left their delivery truck behind. Mm, I don't really see where Garrett could have gone. Maybe he's already gone ahead to the wall. Wall. Huh. All right. Yep. I was Lily. right. Oh, thank goodness. I thought they caught you. Unfortunately, Edna wasn't as lucky. I saw how she was snatched and taken back to the institution. This gives us all the evidence we need. I will contact the task force leaders right away. It's best if you stay put until I come back with reinforcements. However, it could take some time. And I can't guarantee that Edna will still be alive when we finally get the green light. If we're lucky, Dr. Marcel will torture her for a while before finally dissecting her or whatever else it is he intends to do with her. That would give us some time. She'll probably have to part with a few toes or fingers. Oh well, that's the way it goes. In any case, you wait here. I'll come and pick you up from exactly this spot tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow, at the latest. Although the day after tomorrow is a holiday. But oh well, you'll see. Just wait here. <laughs> Lily would have really liked to follow Garrett's instructions. But, well... There were excellent reasons for doing what she did instead. Yep. If you haven't guessed, we are nearing the end of the game. Well, this is like Act 3 ish. 2 ish. 3 2 ish. Through ish. The institution's post Victorian masonry work had a friendly air about it. It was almost as if the architect had tried to spell out, welcome with bricks and barbed wire. 
this unspoken invitation found its culmination in a nearly overgrown back door, and Lily intended to graciously accept it. I seriously wish I could write this good. The door was firmly locked. Well, there's only one thing to do. Unlock it. The door was firmly locked. What? <clears throat> what a little scoundrel. The sneaky hamster had once again crossed Lily's plans. But despite this, Lily had no intentions of exacting a bloody revenge. Yeah, that would be horrible. Exacting revenge. Lily was glad. It was so rare that her friends got along so well with each other. Of course, this was also because she hardly had any friends. Much more important, however, was that the asylum key was no longer out of reach. It had fallen into one of the dark bushes. And now that hamster is a cybernetic owl pellet. The key had fallen into the bush. Just look the inside. The key this. had fallen into the bush. We know. It was very dark in there. But Lily wasn't afraid. Um. After all, it was just a bush. Just a bush. Oh. Yeah. Why did the child have to be so careless all the time? There we go. I have a key. Woo! And I still have my owl whistle. Pipe. Owl pipe. Whistle. An inflatable dinghy had caught in the sewer grate. People flushed the strangest things. Well. Hmm. Wait a second. What's over here first? Dude, this place has its own waterfall? That's awesome. Okay, let's talk about this door. The door was firmly locked. Firmly locked? The door was... Well, who do we have here? A little girl. Just stay where you are, okay? Hey, stop! I'll Lily knows what's anyway. Lily knows what's going on. Oh, damn! Why do children keep getting away from me? I should do more sport. Okay. Let's go boating, guys. Yep. This is as fast as she goes. For now. There's actually a point to this, believe it or not. It's a little dumb, but there's a point. Oh, there you are. Just you wait. I like the fact that he's wearing a uh, hoodie from Phantom University. It seems impossible, but trust me, there's a plan here. Nice shoes, by the way. Chucks? Chuck Taylors are nice. Chuck wears Chucks. I'm not joking. Chuck hey, wears Chucks. come back. Give up. You can't get away. Especially not against the current. That's your hint right there. I, I guess we could talk to him. I don't really want to. Just stay where you are, okay? I guess I can't. Anyway, that's good enough. Speed time! Hey! Come back! See, we're faster than him when we're... 
going with the current. And now we run upstairs. Triumphantly, Lily climbed the ladder. She had finally found a way to get into the institution. Not so fast. You can do it, Lily. Um, what? What? Although she was briefly distracted by a floating energy smarty, Lily was able to reach the ledge. Not a moment too soon as the ladder crashed down behind her, dragging the phantom into the pit with it. No! no! Fortified by the energy smarty, Lily was able to pull herself up on the ledge. Now her search for Edna could continue. I have no words. Oh good! We're in the furnace room. The lamp was glowing red. Just like Lily's eyes at night. I don't think I can go in there. What, what do we got here? Uh, punch card, punch card slot, punch card slot, punch card slot, punch card slot, and a punch card. The map had more holes in it than Lily's socks. The mice there were apparently quite desperate. Let's grab that. Yeah. I think it goes in this one. Yeah, there we go. Um. Hi, Mr. Frock. Who is afraid of the boogeyman? Right. Not Lily. Um. Hey. That's my fireplace. You shouldn't be here, unless you want to bring presents, or sweep the chimney. Not that the soot is bothering me. That was the old Mr. Frock. The new Mr. Frock is enjoying the dirt. Ah, dirt. You see? Yes, I understand. Apparently this guy's from the first game. I've never played the first game, so I don't know. <laughs> That's Mr. Frock to you. And in case you're wondering what a piece of clothing like me is doing inside a fireplace, I'm acquiring soot. That's right. I used to be very fastidious about staying clean. But then this impertinent person came along and dared to spill something on me. The stains never came out. My clothing is black and greasy. My socks haven't been ironed. And I even have fleas. Karen and Bertram, I'd introduce them to you, but they're sleeping right now. Only two fleas? That's pretty good. Um... I'm living in a sooty chimney. So what? I used to be very fastidious about staying clean. Now, I don't care anymore. You're now speaking with the dark Mr. Frog, who eats his gummy bears without a napkin. Okay. There's some nice suit you've got there. Um... Yes, I know that it's dirty here. So what? I love the cobwebs. The dust and that rotting substance in the corner. I just finished combing it. I wouldn't dust here even if you put a feather duster right in my hand. You don't have a feather duster, do you? No, uh -oh. no. Stop. I don't want to know. Hey, what about Dr. Marcel? Duh. You don't need to mumble like that. Ever since Dr. Marcel's accident, we can make as much noise here as we want. He's no longer interested in what's going on inside the asylum. All of his attention is focused on finding Edna. Okay, what about... I'm looking for Edna, too. Uh, somehow you remind me of a patient we used to have here. She was a little taller than you. And I think I remember two red horns and a tail. Oh, well, that would be me. Alright, well, there's a maintenance room, but we gotta see what's up on the roof. Huh. Well, I don't... I don't know how long I've been recording. So we're gonna... We're gonna leave you with this 
food for thought. This bald man in a bee outfit on the roof. Yeah. What the heck? 